So guess what we got? This is the cheapest lithium iron phosphate battery I could find on AliExpress. And it cost me $159, but with tax, it was $172. And these are 100 amp hour Lito Kayla cells. And I also bought a 4S 100 amp BMS, but unfortunately, when I go to click on the product, it's been taken down from AliExpress. And for being the cheapest one on AliExpress, which I'm sure you could find this exact same BMS, it looks pretty good. I mean, these are some beefy bus bar connections. So we'll just hook it up anyways and see if it works. So let's see what the total cost of this battery is. So with these cells and the BMS together, it's $221. Compare that to the competition, $600 to $900 for this same capacity. That is pretty darn cheap. I mean, this is way cheaper than lead acid and any other lithium iron phosphate batteries on the market. So that means that this pack is one third the cost of an SOK battery. But I wonder if it's cheaper than EVE cells. Let's see. Oh, and actually the EVE cells are slightly cheaper. I'm getting $209 for this capacity with the BMS. But depending on which BMS you choose, we'll change the price of these packs. But if these pull full capacity and we can build a 100 amp hour battery for under 250 bucks, this is gonna open up lithium iron phosphate to a lot of people. So let's see what we can do. So first the terminals are scratched, so these are probably grade B cells. And it looks like they sleeved these cells and added the sticker on top. Usually when it's lifting up, it's not the original manufacturer that did this. But the barcode is actually intact. And on the overpressure relief valve, we have the number 23 on all four cells. So maybe they actually match these cells, which would be really nice. 2.97, 2.97, 2.97, 2.97. Somewhat low, but they are all the same voltage. So either they cycle tested them and left them at a low state of charge and then matched them, or they've been sitting in a warehouse for a few years and that's why these are so cheap. But I'm sure we'll find out the reason soon enough. But it's nice that they are the same voltage, so that is good. They're small and pretty lightweight. These look like CATL cells. But, uh-oh, I see a problem. Yeah, check this out, guys. You guys see all those gaps between the cells? All of them have some gas creation inside and they are swollen a little bit. Let's see which one's worse. Between these two is really bad. Look at that. These should be flat. These are not flat. <laughs> you get what you pay for, that's for sure. And unfortunately, a swollen cell is permanently damaged. So the performance of this, I assume, will not be that great. Especially over time, you could have excessive cell drift or one of them will just not have the capacity of the other ones. So let's hook up some bus bars and see if we can actually pull 100 amp hours. And it actually came with bus bars. On today's episode of will this handle the current that the Chinese data sheet states? I don't know, we're gonna find out. <laughs> Man, these things always scare me. They are so small for 100 amps. I don't know, we'll see. Gosh, these are badly swollen. Look at this, guys. All right, let's just see if we can make it work. No way. There's no terminal screws or studs, but they gave us washers. God dang it, man. No way, I am so lucky today. This never ever happens. I have some screws that will fit it. And this one's perfect and it's smaller, so we got the right thread pitch and everything. Thank you, Harbor Freight. All right, there you go. These terminals don't line up because they're so swollen. And we taped the top too, so oh, this isn't good. I'm just gonna cut this tape and then tighten those bus bars down and then call it a day. Yep, they line up now, perfect. What a joke of a battery this is, jeez. This is kind of fun just seeing how pathetic this thing is. By the way, I bought this container for this video, but I'm not gonna do it because this battery is not worth it. But yeah, just keep in mind that you can buy these for like seven bucks at the store and they're perfect for building batteries with. And the black terminal is positive, white is negative, which is the same on my old RV. And I need to add some wires to the BMS, so I'm gonna use some screws. We have P negative that goes out to the loads and chargers and B negative that connects to the negative terminal of the battery. These terminals feel like they wanna strip so bad. If your cells look like this, you want to put them in the trash, by the way. Beginners do not attempt this, please. These are garbage. 
so much time and effort for pure junk. I do like this bolt-on bus bar though. This is pretty nice. How convenient. You could add so many conductors to this thing. It's not a bomb. Oh, it works. So we have power. The BMS is active. So we're gonna start with 75 amps and see if it blows up. I really hope it does. A little bit nervous. A little bit nervous. <laughs> oh. Watch these pull full capacity. That would be the funniest thing in the world. 71 amps, so it's accepting the charge current. So I think it's done charging. It's getting pretty late though. I'm pretty tired now. Yeah, we've got practically zero current. And the cells are bulging. Yeah, look at the gaps now, guys. That's, oh boy. All right, let's test it. And keep in mind that when cells swell, you have gas creation from the electrolyte. And that changes the internal resistance value of each individual cell. So I'm sure if I had a heat camera, one would probably be warmer than the other one. They're all pretty warm, but yeah, the resistance value is different across these cells. So yeah, let's do a capacity test and see what the results are. So we have a CBA4 and an amplifier, and we're gonna connect the battery. Manufacturing tolerances of these Harbor Freight bolts are horrendous. And the CBA program has actually been updated, and it includes the internal resistance of the battery. Oh, there we go. We're gonna pull 20 amps, so it will be a 0.2 C rate test. So we'll come back in five hours and see what the results are. So fast forward to the next day and the test is now complete. And this is very hard to believe, but it actually pulled the full capacity, you guys. We got 100.217 amp hours. We had to test three different times because the last 1% of capacity was hard to access with this BMS because of the low voltage disconnect. So to get it to 2.5 volts per cell, I had to do it two more times. But we actually pulled the full capacity with those junky cells. Can you believe it? I seriously cannot believe this. This is ridiculous. I don't know what to think about these. I can't recommend them because they are swollen. That is a hazard, okay? You don't want to have swollen cells. But they did pull full capacity and they are the cheapest around. You know what you could do is put spacers between these cells on the corners so they can expand and contract without touching each other. Similar to like the fortune cell holders. But I have no idea where these cells are from or why they are swollen. So usually it means that they were overcharged or were possibly over discharged. Because these arrived at a low state of charge, I'm expecting the latter. They were probably left in a warehouse for a very long time and the self discharge rate caught up to them. Something else I wanna mention is usually when grade B cells pull full capacity, it's because they have a 120 amp hour cell and then they rate it for 100 amp hours just to make up for the loss that they know that the cells have. But if you look at the barcode, it says 100A. So I think these are actual 100 amp hour cells and they did pull full capacity. Now that I think about it, I might've been just lucky. I don't think other people buying these cells that are this badly swollen will have the same capacity. I think there will be quite a large degree of variance here. And if I were you guys, I would go with Eve cells if you're going for a cheap build. I know a lot of people like 100 amp hour cells because that's what people sell. But if you're building a battery bank, you might as well just put down the 500 something dollars and get some Eve cells and a nice BMS. And even that pack is like a fraction of the price of all of the other lithium iron phosphate batteries on the market. And even though these cells are swollen and I would never recommend them in a million years, they did pull full capacity, so I cannot get my money back. They did advertise these correctly, unlike other grade B cells that we've tested in the past. But personally, I would avoid these cells like the plague in my personal opinion. I'll have a link below to know which ones to avoid. And then I'll also have other links for Eve cells that are super cheap if you want a super cheap battery option. That's pretty much it for these cells. I'm probably never going to mention these again. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.